What's up, people? We're answering questions inside the Weld app, and our question comes from Jordan Westfall. This is my coworker's machine. He bought it a few years ago, used to strike up with high frequency using a remote and everything. Now the high frequency does not work. He can still get it to light if he's on the remote and touching the material, it will light. So that sounds like there's some kind of high frequency problem. He's asking for any kind of help. I've got a similar problem here in my shop. We're gonna dive into it. We gotta get these panels off and look at the gutty bits inside these machines and then we'll solve your problem or at least set you up for what you gotta do next. You guys hear that? That's that high frequency board in there. It's screaming at us. What's it? What's this? It's saying, Adjust my spark gap, please. What's a spark gap? What's a high frequency board? We gotta power this thing off, take off the panels, and let's find out. First thing is, we gotta get this here panel off so that we can access the goody bits inside. Now, we might wanna ask ourselves, hey, don't, don't lose your screws. What even is high frequency, right? And it's actually just a form of starting the arc. This here machine sends a current from the machine to the tungsten electrode at about 200 kilohertz. Now that's like 200,000 pulses per second. These millivolts jump the gap between tungsten and workpiece, disturbing all the air around it, being able to find and kind of grab and look for that metal and light up with whatever is grounded. You don't put the ground on there, you'll actually see those little millivolts searching and crawling. Now, what we gotta do is adjust our spark gap that's inside this here machine. High frequency starts great for a lot of applications when cross-contamination could be a problem or just keeping that tungsten from touching your work is just a benefit all in one. So we gotta find this high frequency board inside all of this stuff. Ooh, it's so nasty. It's not a bad idea to go ahead and blow out the welding machine while it's even on so the fans are running and blowing all that gunk out. Now before you get to poking and touching and trying to find your way around this machine, be sure we power this thing off. But there's a lot of stuff here, right? Where is that high frequency board even at? What I do is I leave the machine on, don't touch nothing, but hit that remote and you can hear it. And what we do is we'll just trace that down. You'll even see a little lightning bolt and it's right down yonder. Everything's powered off now. Now we've got to adjust the spark gap. Now, this is the reason why your TIG torch is either having the high frequencies no longer working at all, it sounds like it's got a background, maybe it's working every once in a while, or it just, it just is acting finicky, right? So the first thing you do is check the spark gap. It could be some of this internally bits off in the way, maybe a, it, there's some high frequency bleeding out one direction. Uh, but you want to make sure that that, that that board and that little spark gap is, is free from other stuff, right? The next thing is it might be just filthy. It might be dirty. It might have some dirt in it. So blowing with a little bit of air, not too hard. And then getting in there maybe with some, like a piece of paper. You don't want to get too aggressive scratching it with like anything else. Uh, so really, really fine grit stuff, like really, really fine grit stuff or just some paper just to kind of clear the obstructions, if any at all. And then the next thing is to check the gap. Sometimes they spread apart you know you're going to want to check your user manual they don't always look like this either they might look differently so that's one reason why you might want to try to run it down by using the actual remote and finding that high frequency board and then you go to your user manual and see what the spark gap is for this machine it's somewhere around 0.035 so almost like a mig wire but i'm not going to stick any metal in there but i did find my micrometer and i measured two business cards here that are pretty much right on the dot as far as 035 so what i'll do is i'll stick these in here squeeze around it, even kind of give them a wiggle back and forth to clean that little bit of a terminal. Uh, and then, then I'm gonna be set. I'm gonna test the machine, make sure the high frequency is working better and then put everything back together. Well, we got her all sorted out now, guys. We just, all we had to do is take off the panel, clean it a little bit, get the schmutz off of it. That's what I had in between mine. If you go back, there seemed to be something kind of in between them that messed up my uh, spark gap there. So we got it cleaned up, made sure that they're aligned right properly, as well as having the right gap. And our high frequency is now current. 
Now, if that still isn't working, you're liable to need a new high frequency board. So get with your manufacturer's customer support and see what you can do about a new one. If it's an older machine, you might need to get it parted out. And if you go inside the Weld app, guys, go ask any question in there. I'll be more than happy to answer it here on the YouTube channel. And if I don't get to it, someone else will. Another fun fact about high frequency is it can interrupt your Bluetooth connections on either your stereo, your music, your headphones, or in this case, my wireless mic right here. Let's try it out, see if it, see if it cuts out my Bluetooth.